So not so long ago, someone asked me how I go about adapting, uh, let's say, a fast rock guitar part to play it finger style. So if you can imagine the original would have been played with a pick, what do I do differently when I play that, that part finger style? And I thought that would be an interesting subject for a video, especially as just recently I've been working on a song for one of the bands that I'm in called Black Rose, and it's by Thin Lizzy. And that's got a, a great little guitar part in the middle of it as well, um, originally played by Gary Moore. It's really fast and furious. Um, so what I thought I'd do is I'd give you a quick run through of it right now. I'm just playing on a, on a clean guitar. No pedals, no distortion, no backing track, nothing, just so you can hear what it sounds like when I play it clean like that. And then we'll start to break it down. So it's not perfect yet. I've only been working on it for, for a week or so. Now, uh, a quick disclaimer here. I'm not trying to play this note accurately, and that's got nothing to do with the picking. The, the reason is that I used to play in a folk rock band about 25 years ago, and I recognize two of the three sections in this music. The second and the third are part of uh, a tune called the Rakish Paddy, and we used to play that in the other band. And so I've kind of stolen some of the lines from that rather than sticking slavishly to the way Gary Moore plays it. But, but other than that, it's, it's pretty much, it's very similar to, to Gary Moore's approach as well. Um, now what I've done as well is I've tabbed this out and I'll put the tab in the description field just to help you out because there's, there's quite a lot of notes in it as you can see. Uh, I don't want to spend too long going through it note, note for note because you know it's a reasonably advanced piece so you should be able to work it out by looking at what I'm playing if I play it through slowly enough for you and there's always the tab to reference as well. But anyway, what I'll do is I'll focus on the left hand and then the right hand going through each of the, each of the sections in turn. Okay, so let's go through the first section then. I'll start with the left hand and I'll, I'm going to go reasonably quickly through this because um, I've got the tabs online as well so you can download those. But also it's, it's quite an advanced tune so if you can't work it out with me playing through it slowly then maybe it's not, you're not ready for it. But anyway, uh, let's go through that first section which looks like this. So hopefully you can see there I'm basically strumming a D and an A note, then slurring down from F sharp E to the open D, then playing the A. And that's the main riff. So the picking then. Um, the, there are kind of three techniques that I'm doing in this first section. The first is a straight strum, so I'm strumming the D and the A and the A notes with a down strum back of my second and third fingers, I think. And then that main riff, I'm doing it with my index and second finger, so hopefully you can see that. And the reason for that is that if I do the strum, it, it kind of lines my index finger up to be able to just move back again to play that second 
second section. And then, then there's a little, little a line there. So that starts on an E. And you can see I'm using my, my tremolo technique to do this these little four notes. Thumb, third, second, first, then thumb to start the line and then alternating between my index and second finger again. And again I start that line with my, my thumb the second time through. It's twice as twice as many notes, eight notes this time. So you can see I'm just going around that tremolo pattern twice. And it's actually quite important that you start with the thumb. Because that means you finish with your hand clenched in a fist, if you like, which sets you up for that second, second strum. So that's entirely why I start that phrase with my thumb. So section B then, it's all based around the 4th fret, um, starting on that A, and it looks like this. So hopefully you can see it's moving between, uh, based around a sort of C major tonality. To D. And you can see you start playing the C sharp there. To C. So the picking in this section, I, I just basically use my tremolo technique all the way through. I start with my thumb and I just maintain it. really all they do in that second section. Okay so section C then really comes in three parts. It starts with this, it's quite a fun little line actually, so I'm up on the seventh fret. part of it. And then the second part is to there. And then the final part is here. So I'm dropping down to around that fourth fret again. So playing through those three parts again we've got this. So here I'm, I'm using the tremolo technique again and that fits quite nicely over the, the first two lines. And the second part again, tremolo. 
tremolo. Now, when I move on to that third part, I actually reset my, my pattern to start with the thumb again. So I've just finished with the thumb, and I start this final, this third section with my thumb. And the reason for that is the second time through, I finish with a strum. So if I start with my thumb, see it bunches my hands up ready for the final strum at the end. So that's it. Hopefully that, that shows you what kind of thought processes I go through when I'm playing a line like this. I mean most of the time if it's just straight picking I can just use my uh, tremolo technique directly without thinking about it too much as I did in that second line. Um, if I'm mixing techniques up like I did in the first and the third where I'm thinking about dropping in strums as well as playing fast lead lines. I, th I start to think about, okay, how do I set myself up to be able to hit that next strum or how do I come out of that first strum in order to drop into a fast lead line. So that's really the only time that I, I have to think through these and kind of plan how I'm going to pick it, but otherwise I just go straight for it. Anyway, hopefully that was useful for you, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.